Okay, so um, I'm working on a large-scale writing project today. Sort of at the beginning stages of it right now. Uh, I've been working on it for probably around eight years or so with all the ideas and bits and pieces over time, but I'm really hunkering down um, this semester because I'm in sabbatical to write this thing. And um, today I'm working on the idea of design simulation models. This comes from Barb and Dodge 2008, and sort of I'm thinking through in curriculum with curriculum design for music education um, specifically. Sometimes the curriculum can be a little bit disconnected from students' lives, their interests, and so um, I'm looking at how do we might how might we make curriculum more relevant from a curriculum design standpoint, and in addition to making the content itself more relevant, um, how might we make the contexts more relevant, like the ways that we engage students in learning, whatever the specific content is of the curriculum. So I'm kind of focusing in today on this Barab and Dodge article from 2008 and sort of taking some of the ideas there and recontextualizing them for music education. So on Friday, uh, I was focusing mostly on anchored instruction, the idea of anchored instruction as one of the approaches that's related to this sort of design simulation. Um, and today, I'm going to kind of move past anchored instruction to kind of think through problem-based learning. And I thought it would be kind of fun for myself and maybe other people if I used it as an opportunity to check out um, Site AI. I haven't really played around much with this. I've seen some videos of people working with it. Um, I was curious, so I got an account. And I'm going to kind of load it up here. And um, let's see here. Load it up. And I'm going to kind of check out how this might work in relationship to um, problem-based learning, and then kind of play around just to see what it's like. So let's see here. Problem-based learning. And let's say um, relevance, because that's sort of <laughs> one of the things I'm interested in. So let's see what it does. I've never really tried this before. Curious what it comes up with. Okay, so we have some excerpts. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So what it does is it's pulling, it tells you where in the paper it's coming from. It tells you its confidence and the fact that it's talking about the thing that I'm looking for, problem-based learning. Um, and it gives you a lot of options here. So I'm just gonna try to make sense of what I'm looking at first of all. Okay, I can can have sort by relevance, sort by date, sort by most cited. This is pretty, a lot of options here. Oh, help me understand these results. Let's see. OK. Generally represents a paper. The snippets are citation statements. How many papers are cited by supporting statements? This is one of the things that compelled me to want to check this out, was when I was looking at people's videos and they had this option for contrasting statements from papers that it was cited by, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm just going to kind of play around with this and see what it does. So this first paper, Description of Needs Analysis of Learning Tools Using a Problem-Based Learning Model to Improve Mathematical Problem Solving 2019. Relevant research of problem-based learning conducted a reflection or positive benefits. Pre-service primary school. Relevant research of PBL here conducted a reflection of positive benefits pre-service primary school learning. So this, okay, so it's basically saying like people learned through PBL. This is, um, I like this kind of a thing here, more of a description of. Tend to be characterized by students working collaboratively in small groups, learning centric and problems relevant. I actually like this, so let's see here. Let's see what some of the options are with this. Um, over here, I can copy, flag the classification. Hmm, not yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Let's copy it and see what happens. I'm going to go over here. I'm curious if when I copy it, if it brings in the citation with it. So let's see what happens. 
And actually, I'm going to make a subcategory here so I can remind myself um, import of content from site.ai. And also curious, can I actually link to this specific search? Is that what this is here? No, create dashboard. Let's see what the URL is. Okay, it's it's grabbing the search. I don't know if it when I if I were to run it next time if it would be the same exact results as it is right now, but it is grabbing what the search was in site. So let me um, site search on problem-based learning and relevance. Okay, so now I have that there. Um, and then let's go ahead and paste in, I have to recopy this because the last thing I copied was the URL. So copy this. And let's post this here. Okay, it does, that's nice. So when it's pasting in the content, this is pretty cool. It gives you this text mentioning site from section with the people who it's citing. Let me put that here. And then it has a DOI on it too. And then it puts it in these um, dashes. That's pretty cool, I like that. And um, that's nicer than, oh, and I, see, I'm new to streaming. I didn't, I forgot that you can't see any of the stuff that I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, so um, what I did is I copied and pasted it into Obsidian, and um, it grabbed all, when I pasted it, it grabbed all of this. And um, the reason for that, which I kind of like here, is that um, instead of, like copying the text like this, by using the copy feature, it grabs all the additional information, which I find useful, particularly if I'm doing a lot of this. I want to remember where everything came from so that I can either go back into those particular articles or at minimum know that I pulled it from here so that I can reference it if I cite this somehow. Okay, so I'm curious what else we can do with this. So I'm just going to put um, import I'm back in the Obsidian. I'll have to get used to as I'm doing this streaming more often of like kind of going back and forth between these different windows that are all over my screen. And if anyone is chatting, I haven't figured out the way to like look at if anyone is even in here or chatting yet, because again, I'm kind of new to this. But if you have questions, you can always put them on the bottom of this video and I'll try to answer them. Okay, so I'm going to go back into site here and kind of, I'm going to be going back and forth between site and Obsidian. So let's go back to this and see what else I can do with just this show abstract. Puts it right there. Reflection journal writing was effective in promoting self-reflection and learning. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder how they're relating this to problem-based learning. So if I click on vul view full text, I'm gonna make this in a new tab. Reflection in relationship to problem-based learning. This looks like this is where they grabbed that, where site grabbed the information from. Okay, so they're focusing on self-reflection. Problem-based learning incorporates reflection. So one component of problem-based learning is a self-reflection. At the completion of problems, students reflect on what they have learned, how well they have collaborated. 
other techniques. Okay, so this is interesting. So, you know, they're looking at how um, a tutor, an educator can scaffold the self-reflection, but other techniques may be helpful. One approach might be the use of reflection journals. You know, this is kind of funny. It reminds me of way back when I first started teaching middle school instrumental music education. Um, this is back in the, um, like, 1999, early 2000s. I had students um, work on self-reflection through journaling and band, and they thought it was very odd. This was not something that is, was typical at the time. I still don't think it's very typical um, to have students journaling. It was kind of like something that we would do sometimes in class, but it was mostly like a homework assignment, um, which not everyone was super happy about. But I thought the self-reflection was important, and what they wrote in there was very helpful for me to understand sort of um, how they were making sense of things, how they were seeing their own growth and learning, what their perspectives were on various things. Sometimes I had prompts, um, but also I was hoping that over time they would see their own growth and learning. And also, I mean, I don't think I was thinking about this research at the time, obviously, um, but I was thinking about the importance of self-reflection because I was influenced by the Arts Propel model from Harvard's Project Zero. Um, so journaling... And journals were a part of that. So it's kind of, this is making me think back to that time. Um, so this is about self-reflection as a component of PBL more than it is of like PBL overall. But this would be interesting. I'm actually going to download this PDF. And um, kind of probably read through this at some other time. And then that reminds me, so what's nice about this is this is making me think, okay, let's add a section on self-reflection here. And I think what's um, one of the things that's kind of fun about all of this, especially being, being at these, this stage in the project, is you could see over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to go over to my Devon view again. Bear with me as I get better at this. Or sorry, Devin, my obsidian, my obsidian view. Um, on the, all the way on the left-hand side, I've started to use the long form plugin as a way to sort of keep track and organize things. Um, and so one of the things that's kind of, I'll say fun, challenging, good to be thinking through at this point is um, how I would organize all of this. And so for instance, now that I'm thinking, okay, uh, self-reflection is important for problem-based learning. Self-reflection is important for all kinds of things. So would I be talking about self-reflection primarily when um, we get to this part of a book text? Or would it be its own section? So one of the things I'm using to track all this, let me see if I can figure out a way to show this on the screen here. I'm going to come into here. Let's see if this works. I was experimenting with this before. Where is my other window of Obsidian? Oh, here it is. Okay. Let's see. Can you see this? I'm going to try to get this so that you can see what I'm looking at here. This is something I've been playing around with for a bit. Okay, so I want to... There we go. Okay. So I cr used um, the Obsidian Projects plugin. This is newer for me because I have not used it before, I think, the 18th. looks like the first time, the first day that I used this, and I haven't really been using it much. So... Um, what I'm trying to do is use Obsidian for as much as possible, just so I'm not out on multiple platforms to stay highly focused on the project at hand. And um, so this project plugin I started playing around with to basically track things that I need to work on or I want to work on um, that kind of pop up throughout the day as I'm working on this project so I don't forget them. And I have like multiple different ways of doing this, but I'm playing around with a project plugin right now. So for instance, um, I was just thinking about self-reflection. So I'm gonna put add note over here. And what I did is I have this set up so um, when I add a note, it's gonna automatically, it's gonna do this pop-up. I'm gonna put write on self-reflection. 
And then you could see here, um, it's gonna go to a template that I set up. And I, it was a lot of like back and forth of creating this template based on actually creating these notes to make it um, make sense to me. So that's popping up. Um, the template is popping up where? Too many windows all over the place here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, okay. All right, so right on self-reflection, there it is, right there. So um, I like to, I could go in here and manually click on all this, like I could click on date created and do it right in here. Um, but I actually want to click on this note and then put it all on here. And this is all the metadata that um, if you have not worked with Obsidian's properties yet, I think this might still only be with the people who have the Catalyst um, account, because I'm not sure if this is fully public yet. If not, when it comes when it becomes fully public, this is amazing. This is what used to be the YAML. I guess it still is the YAML, the metadata, um, but it's just very clean and it's much easier for me to do this. So, okay, so concepts, I'm gonna put self-reflection or reflection. That's the larger concept. Um, so I'm tracking concepts. This is not started. Um, it's not based from a daily note. It's sort of like, I would even put like low priority right now. Not meaning that it's not important to talk about this, but in the set of various things that I wanna get first, it's not the highest priority because I can always come back to it. I would say that these kinds of things are high energy or capacity. So for instance, the reason I have that as a category is because um, I'm working on this project kind of all day long throughout the day. And so I wanna kinda have a sense of like, if I'm completely spent, um, but I still wanna get a little bit more work done and, I, and perhaps that's just toxic in and of itself and I shouldn't be doing that. But like for instance, I might be like, ah, oh, I can get a little bit done, but I'm just not where I was at 12.43 earlier today. I could indicate like, here's a thing that's sort of like not super high energy or high capacity, like if I just need to do something. Um, so I can put um, the energy there. Related notes, I don't know. Do I want to put a related note right now? Um, I don't think right yet. And then typewriting, the type of writing, this is writing, not... Um, gathering info gathering this is kind of writing okay i'm going to put for task let's see here oh okay so here's an interesting thing you can work with all that metadata in either your edit view or the reading view um i'm going to go into the edit view so for task, this is, I'm just gonna put, um, oops, work on writing about self-reflection. But here, I'm gonna kind of make a note to myself of um, link back to idea of self-reflection, oops, being important for and then here I can actually do problem-based learning. I actually have my own note on problem-based learning, I believe. Yeah, here. But I also wanna remember that this is also in, actually no, where do I have it? Related concepts. Um, I'll put it here. I have to think about how much do I really want to be like linking around to all the different notes that something's in? I just don't, I want to remember that I came. So this is how might we design embodied. So let's um, also link to, oh. how might we design embodied curriculum because this is in this project. And then I'm going to put this in problem-based learning. Um, here we go. I love that option, by the way, if you've never done that before, where you can find the headers. Um, I, if I wanted to, I could embed this, but I'm not going to do that right now. So that's enough for me for that. And so I can go back to this project thing. And now, you know, even three hours later, I might forget that I was thinking about reflection in this moment. And now it's there so that I don't forget. 
so that's one way of doing this. So I'm going to go back. Um, let's see here. Back to Obsidian. No, nope, not that one. This one. Okay. This view. All right. So I'm not going to write a whole lot about self reflection right now, but that's just there for later. Let's go back to what I was doing a moment ago and get into the um, back to the site that I was playing around with. I think that'll be kind of, um, I'm, I am really curious of like all the various things that I could do with that. So let's find my window here. Where's my site window? Here we go. Okay. All right, so let's go back to site. All right, so I was looking at this this one from 2011. We went to the full text. Let's hide the abstract. Let's see what this does. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I can generate a citation. There's like so many different ways to do that, but that's nice that it's in-house. Okay, so then over here, we have the badges, number of publications citing, number of supporting citation statements. Click here, and open this new tab and see what happens. Let's see what this is all about. So here are the other the findings of this study are consistent with the... How cool is this? Oh, my God. I mean, like, because uh, if I weren't using this, if I wasn't using, wasn't using Site AI, I would be using Google Scholar or some other kind of thing and just reading through a ton. And then I'd be putting them in Dev and Think and maybe looking for kind of scanning through. And here it just goes straight to it. Um, this is congruent with more recent similar work. Moreover, similar conclusions were reached by Lou and Sch Schmidt. And then so all of these are, let's see, this is about culture-based learning, improving cognitive learning outcomes. This is about developing critical reflection skills in formal coach education programs, using Nurse Tune's song as a motivational and cognitive technique in science teaching. That sounds fascinating. I kind of want to know what want to know what that is. I'm gonna try to stay focused. Um, Self-reflection is a way of looking back on what was learned. The results in Table 2 further validated the study conducted by Lou and Schmidt. Okay, so this is cool. These are the cite these are citations that Cite is pulling from other publications that specifically support um, this article that we were just looking at. So I'm going to go back to the Cite AI, and then this is fast. Number of mentioning citation statements about this work. Hmm. Number of supporting citations, number of mentioning citations about this work, number of publications citing this work. So what's the difference between number of publications citing and number of mentioning citation statements? Now let's see what this is. I love that they have um, all these little info links here. So help me understand this report. It shows you exactly how self-reflection and academic performance is their relationship was cited, how it was cited. Oh, okay. So this is where they're pulling in content. I guess the other thing is must just be like um, just a list of the no, but this tells you citation statements as well. Hmm. This is a site report page which shows you exactly how self-reflection academic performance is was cited in publications that came afterward.
I think these might be the same. I don't, I'm a little confused by this. If anyone um, has used Site AI before and understands what the difference between um, this is and this is, that would be, um, I'd be interested in that. Maybe this is normally if there is a, yeah, this is, I, I can't quite figure that out. I remember it was mentioning earlier that you can sometimes get conflicting evidence and maybe it would normally be that if it wasn't this. What's the question mark? Oh, this is contrasting citations. So there's no contrasting citations in some of these. All right, let's just kind of keep going through and taking a look at this here. Um, I'm learning this as we go along. I have not used this before, so this is all new to me. Um, so I'm not intending for this to be like a tutorial on using Site AI. This is just me doing my work today and live streaming it. And maybe you're watching it afterwards, kind of learning along with me. Um, but if you know more, put a comment below so I can learn with you or from you as well. Okay, so we're back here in the 2011. What else could we do? So we have that list of citations. Um, Add to dashboard. What does this do? Okay, so this is if I want to cite it. Add to dashboard. This must be um, to create a new custom dashboard. I wonder if this is something similar to Research Rabbit, where you can just, um, I don't know. I'm not going to do that right now. OK, let's keep going down here. So this is Dolman's, Michelson, Marion Bohr, 2014. Here's another. This is, explains what PBL is. Innovative educational approach. To prepare students for collaboration. Should we choose between problem-based learning and T-based learning? No, combine the best of both worlds. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Okay, here explains what they're doing. Okay, remember that I was looking for rele and relevance. So here, I love that it bolds the words that we're looking for. Oh, and it, you know what's kind of cool? It's smart and it knows to look for relevant in addition to relevance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Relevance of the problem to the learners is really important to encourage, encouraging them to initiate the discussion. Discussing well-designed relevant problems will enhance learners' reasoning strategies and help them share their knowledge. I mean, it all comes back to so many people cite Mello and Silver. Saudi Arabia. Okay, interesting. Half the participants raise their concerns about the relevance of problems used in PBL tutorials significantly important. This is, see, this is the kind of thing that I'm very interested in because I'm thinking about, um, you know, music education, curriculum, how do we make things more relevant? It's not just the content, it's the way that we situate it. And so if we're creating problems for students to work through and those problems are not relevant to their lives or to the way that people do music outside, um, I see that as something that, you know, maybe we could do something better than that. So this is interesting. This is from a medical teacher. So completely different field. Let's copy it. I love this. It's going to grab um, all the information. I'm going back um, into Obsidian. Let's see if I can do that for you all. Okay. So here... I want to make a thing that's called relevance. Wait, I actually want to, let's say, problem-based learning, import of content. Um, I'm going to make these headers here too. So 
reflection. Actually, this would be a fourth level header. Reflection, that will be a different category on So this is import problem-based learning. Let's think through headers here for a moment. This was anchored instruction. This is problem-based learning. This is problem-based learning stuff that's imported from site AI. That's one topic. Um, and then in the idea of design simulation models, reflection might be a bigger issue. Relevance might be a bigger issue. I'll have to think through that. Um, so I'm going to put here a fourth level header, header on relevance. Really, just working with site AI. I also have this. Um, I have the content that originally came from the Barb and Dodge article, and then a whole bunch of other stuff that I have um, in Dev and Think, and then other places throughout Obsidian. So I have. I really do have a ton of info on problem-based learning. I just wanted to use this for test out site for now. Um, and I'll continue writing. One of my goals for today is to kind of look across all these things and get started on um, synthesizing and writing. So let's see here. I'm going to paste this in from the site. Let's get this down here. It would be kind of cool if there was a way for me to control the way that this copies and pastes. So that puts the space there. And then, you know, go like this, just for easier reading. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Um, I want to remember this. All right, let's keep on checking things out here. We're going to go back to Arc. Arc is my browser that I've been using lately. Love it. OK. Seductive details in the flipped classroom, the impact of interesting but educationally irrelevant information on student learning and motivation. Oh my gosh, this is sort of my life story. Constantly coming across interesting things that may or may not be relevant to what I'm doing right now. Um, ah, this is interesting. I wonder if this is going to deal with like cognitive load or something. Let's see. Decrease the amount of working memory available for learners to use in relevant le learning relevant course material, potentially leading to decreased learning. Ooh, curious what that's all about. Recent studies suggest that prior knowledge can mitigate the negative effect of seductive details. The overall cognitive load. This is fascinating. OK. Instructors can vary the novelty and complexity of the content to match students' background knowledge and interests. This is content relevant images that create surprise or awe. Huh. This is fascinating. I want to read this one. Because I'm thinking of how often um, in music, in music teaching contexts, particularly in general music contexts, we can do all kinds of things as a sort of wrapper to put around the content that we're um, interested in students learning to make it fun or to make it interesting. And um, you know, obviously, I haven't read this yet, but I'm going to, and it'd be I'd be curious to see. It, is it possibly having an impact? If they don't have the prior knowledge, is it possible that the things that we are layering onto the content in the way that we're designing an activity in this case, um, that it could actually be um, impacting their ability to learn the new material would be really interesting to know. And that would definitely factor into curriculum design, right? Like how we're designing activities and projects, or in the case of this part that I'm working on right now, um, how we're designing the problems or how we're um, incorporating problem-based learning. The idea of the whole point of talking about problem-based learning here is to make things more relevant and for them to have more sort of residue beyond the class itself. So let's, um, here's a question that I want 
have to, for myself. As I'm thinking through all the things that I want to do for my that um, list, that project management thing I was showing before, that's been all about writing stuff so far. I haven't done one where it's like, hey, I should read this article and I'm going to have so many of that. I normally use OmniFocus. If I really want to streamline everything into one place for the project, when it comes to like, hey, read this article, do I want that to be in OmniFocus or do I want that to be in Obsidian because I can Im imagine how it will just get super unwieldy thinking about all the different articles that I want to read as I'm coming across them. And where would I even put that? Sometimes I put things in my daily note I'll have a different video on like all the different systems I'm using. I'm still experimenting right now. It's pretty early on. So let's try this. I'm going to grab the abstract. No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the citation information. So I want to cite. I want to copy this. I want to go back into um, Obsidian. Still getting used to this, these controls. <laughs> I'm using a stream deck and I'm playing around with that too. So this whole live stream is also just me learning how to do any of this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna add a note. Read, oh, what was the, Malloy et al, 2019. Okay, let's see here. Let's see, this is a good, good test case for seeing how well this, this works or if it just becomes like overwhelming with too much stuff in it. So now I'm gonna click on this. Let's do the date created here. That's one thing that's like super easy to do in this part. I'm gonna click on the Malloy at all. Okay, so. What concept would this be? I think I, I think I kind of need to read this. All right, so this is not started. Priority, actually this relates to medium. I'm gonna need a high capacity to do that. The reason it says type writing, that's not what I want. Um, is because up here you could see as I'm using this as a, you know, for the first time, this projects as a project management tool within Obsidian. And I'm thinking, okay, if I need it for the future, there's things that I do besides large scale writing projects. So I want, might want to have two different types. Maybe there's a better way to do this. Maybe it should be like project management slash. Um, but anyway, I wanted things that were like very specific to this project. So I'm gonna make a new one here. I'm gonna call it reading. Okay, related note. There isn't one yet here. Okay, so I'm gonna put, gonna go into editing mode here. Um, read, here's a citation, um, explanation goes into issues around But seductive info for learners and impact and relationship to designing learning experiences. Okay, let me um let me grab the quote. Just to remember it, what triggered me to kind of think here. I kind of like this template that I made for this. It's working quite nicely. I might find that I want to add additional. I don't even remember why I put that all there. Okay. All right. I think that, so if nothing else, this will just remind me when I'm going out through um, that's some other point. Oh yeah, I wanted to read that because otherwise I might forget. So let's put it back here. 
let's go back to site here like this. Okay, so back in site AI. Um, so I now know I'm going to go read that more. I would be kind of interested um, to see. There's nothing supporting this, but there are other things that have cited it. So let's uh, let's be curious and kind of check this out. Let's open this in a new tab and see who has cited this paper and what they were talking about. I'm a little scared because I don't want to go down a whole massive rabbit hole around this yet. But I'm thinking, okay, this does relate to design. There's a reason to be kind of looking through this right now. Inconsistent seduction, addressing confounds and methodological issues in the study of seductive detail effect. This is maybe something that I have kind of thought about before, or maybe it was like adjacent to other principles or theories or frameworks that I've learned about, but I don't the framework of a seductive detail effect is not something that I am familiar with that phrase before just now, um, but I'm finding it really interesting from a curricular design standpoint. Hmm. Open research has been done, has not demonstrated a seductive detail effect outside of the lab. Oh, perhaps we should not be, overly worried about including interesting but irrelevant information in their instructional materials. <laughs> I, so AI, this is awesome. I mean, the amount of time this is saving me and kind of helping me think through, all right, let's kind of go down this rabbit hole. Let's trace this strand here. Um, and... A, finding things that I might not have found, but also guiding what I will actually spend more time reading. So, so kind of helping to not go down rabbit holes that don't lead anywhere. Um, factors have been found in intermediate effects of prior knowledge, flipped classrooms, inclusion of seductive details, students without prior knowledge, okay. Oh, how cool is this? And then you can go straight to any of the cited work. Oh, man. Okay. Motivation to perceive learning of secondary education history students. Fourteen recommendations to create a more inclusive environment for LGBTQ plus individuals in academic biology. Cool. Using pop culture and humor is a popular way to engage students. This must be a quote from a participant, or I don't know. The urge to merge is strong for some of us. Okay, this is good. Be thoughtful. You know what, I, this is less relevant to the immediate thing I'm looking for, but good to read. So how would I remember to do this? You know what, I d generally when I have something that I'm like, okay, I want to read that, it's not specific to the exact thing that I'm working on, I don't, um, I'll just download the article. So what's the easiest way to do that? I can try to remember. If I go to site, Was there an easy way to download from this interface? I'm trying to remember. Well, let's see. Let me open up the actual article itself. View full text. Ah. Okay, you can have the whole thing is here. So this must be a download view PDF. 
So it's cool. I'll just download this PDF file, and then I kind of go through that, um, you know, fairly regularly. I actually have this cool thing. I think it's cool. I download the PDF. You won't see this all popping up on your on the screen because it's not shared right now. But I have when I download a PDF file, it goes into a folder, my download folder. But then I have I think it's like a Hazel script because I did this a long time ago. If there's a PDF file, um, it grabs it out of the downloads file folder and puts it into a PDF folder. And then I did this whole thing. I can't remember how I did this, but I did this thing where like keyboard maestro pops up a thing and says, should this file be sent to Devin, as in Devin Think? And then if I press OK, it will let me select it, and then it will put it into a, a separate folder for Devin Think, and then Devin Think is looking in that folder and will grab anything in there. And if I say just cancel the little pop-up, it just goes into the PDF folder. But then I can just manually put it in there at some other point. That's what I'm going to do right now. Um, but am I wrong that like a second ago, so now I have this to look at at some other time. Um, and this would be kind of great for thinking through inclusive environments, and that could relate to the book as well, and just everything, teaching. Um, I thought I saw something about an orchestra orchestra audition when I clicked something by accident here. Did I? No. Uh, no, stay focused. <laughs> okay. Let's come back to this, the seductive details. Oh my gosh, it's so easy to go down rabbit holes. Uh, I'm still looking at the people who were citing that other thing on the seductive details. Self-regular learning. This is also specific to flipped classrooms, possibly, but probably not. I mean, bother outcomes. What are wise interventions? OK, it's just something to look into. So I have, um, if I go back to the original obsidian scene here, and um, I'm gonna kind of put this back here. Okay, so if I go back to here, and I'm thinking about um, the larger issue, which is designing designing environments that are sort of rich and connected to the world outside of the classroom, and one approach to doing that is through problem-based learning. How relevant right now is this idea of the um, seductive material I don't know relevance is important I'll make a little note here I don't even know if it goes in here I actually have I'm gonna go back to my daily note for a second oops let's go back I'm still figuring a lot of this stuff out okay so I'm gonna go back to um, let's see here okay this window and what I want to do is I want to make a note in my daily note. So in my daily note here, um, when I just want to keep track of stuff throughout the day and it's not like a to-do, I have this like current issues to address. So I'm going to make a note here and say, um, think through seductive but not, um, how do they word it? Seductive details, but not most relevant, because we're in the topic of relevance, right? So seductive, how do I think through seductive, but um, not most relevant, possibly extraneous? Content and its impact on engagement and learning. C, would it still have, no. There's probably a way to link to the actual task that I gave myself for. Um, but I wanna go back to the site for a second. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back to site. You're not seeing it right now. I'm going. I'm, I don't feel like switching the screens for just for a second here. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna grab the citation information. Site AI makes it super easy to do this. Come back to here. Um, and then put it. So I paste it here. So I can just remember. Like this is what I was reading when I was with. This is what I was en engaging with when I had this idea to think through this. And then it's in this, um, not, it's not necessarily a to-do, it's just in this current issues to address. And one of the things I do sort of at the end of the week usually is I go back through all my daily notes and um, I just grab that part of the daily note. So I can just kind of go back to all these different days and oh, here's the stuff I was thinking about this day. Here's the stuff I was thinking about this day. Here's the stuff. And then some of these I will turn into tasks for the project management system. And some of them are just like, oh, yeah, I was thinking about that. That's interesting. Um, so it's just a way. I have multiple systems right now to keep track of all the stuff I'm thinking about and all the stuff that I need to do as I'm working throughout the day. Um, and just so it doesn't get unwieldy. And then I think what I will start to figure out, I've only been using this these two systems, the project management approach within Obsidian with the projects plugin and the sort of like daily note info that's sprinkled around. I've only been using those two systems with this project for I would say about two weeks now. And I think after about a month, I'll kind of reflect on it and go, this is overkill, I don't really need this, or this is super helpful, or maybe I need to tweak it. So I'm like developing systems as I'm working on this project. And that's a lot of like what I'm doing just even right now is like, what's, this, what's the system for using Site AI? And how does that relate to anything? So I'm gonna go back to Site AI now. And um, I'm gonna kind of take a look here at uh, let's see here. I want to go back. I don't really need this seductive detail stuff anymore. I'm going to get rid of that tab. Um, I already downloaded that article. I'm just trying to clean things up so I can kind of trace myself back to focus here. Self-reflection and academic performance is their relationship. And go back to, hey, remember the very first thing I was doing here <laughs> quite a while ago of like just looking for problem-based learning and relevance? That took me down a really actually productive and generative rabbit hole, but I want to kind of go back here. Okay, so I'm now going back to the first set of um, citations that Site AI showed me for problem-based learning and relevance. So now case-based e-learning, blended approach, combining e-learning formats, exam relevance, e-learning content. This person, Rawpak, reported virtual collaborative learning to be as effective as problem-based learning. Okay, just kind of looking around for stuff that shouts out to me here. Okay, here it is. This is the um, this is the why I'm looking at problem-based learning to begin with, is that. And from a curriculum design standpoint, we could probably do more sometimes of using professionally relevant problems. Now professionally, in this case, doesn't necessarily need to mean like related to a specific vocational context or career, but, but more like what do people do with music out in the world? That's what I'm thinking about right now. So when I go back to um, my Obsidian file, I'm actually gonna grab this here. Context matters when striving to promote active and lifelong learning and medical education. I mean, hey, I could take that whole, t I won't do this, obviously, but I could say, context matters when striving to promote active and lifelong learning and music education. That's exactly what I'm trying to get at right now. So this looks like a great article um, to read. Um, you know, why all, why all the articles in medical education? Because problem-based learning, from my understanding, comes out of that tradition. I could be wrong on tracing to, to its roots, but um, it has a lot of relevance from my perspective in music education too. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna do the thing that I did before, click to copy. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'll do this fast. I'm gonna paste this into Obsidian. Um, you're not gonna see that because I have too many windows open, but I'll show you what it looks like in Obsidian in a minute. I'm going to paste this in here. This is still content. So I have this whole section in Obsidian right now of stuff that I'm bringing in from Site AI. I'm going to grab this other one too. 
grab that, stick it into Obsidian. And then I want to um, remember to read this article. So I'm going to link it in a new tab, grab it. I'm going to cite it. I really do. I was asking before, is it going to be overwhelming to keep track to keep track of all the things to add in a task manager? I think it would be if I was trying to do them throughout the day. But what seems to make sense more for me right now is to stick them all in that daily note and then batch process them at the end of the day into tasks, right? Because like that's a low level energy, low kind of capacity thing to do is turning things into tasks. If I were to be doing that right now, it's a lot of just like stuff to think about and energy killers. So for my to-do, I even have a, um, I'll show this to you. I forgot that I had this. So if I go into here, um, Obsidian, in the template for the daily note, I have a to-do. And I forgot that I did. So I have that right there, and I'm just going to put read this. And so for context, I'll put um, for a problem... perspectives. Okay, so site AI is sort of, in a way, uh, I think saving me some time in terms of helping me think through like what should I read next or what would be helpful to read. I'm coming back here. Um, I don't need to keep looking at that specific article because I made a note to myself to do that. 2017. Teacher's knowledge, exploration about environmental problem in order to enhance problem-based learning. Relevant learning, students with different culture and language background. Hmm. Look at this, there's so many pages. How many did it tell me? Oh my God. <laughs> 206,462 results. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go through some of these, obviously not all of them, um, and then pause, You know, make sense of things, Get a, get a sense of what I want to do next. Um, but I think for now, I'm going to end this live stream. Thanks for joining me if you joined me. Um, hope some of this was helpful. I'll probably leave it up for people to watch afterwards in case any of it is helpful. Um, and if you had any information about using Site better, Site AI, let me know. If you happen to know about problem-based learning in relationship to education and curriculum design and have something to share, just let me know. Stick in the comments. Um, have a good one. I'll see you next time.